The case of severely deviated crooked nose to the, to the left side, as you see, plus, of course, with this deviation, patient has got a blocked nose. So patient going for septoranoblasty and partial trimming of the inferior turbinates. I hope you enjoy the procedure. It's really a challenging case. Thank you. So we started now marking Ben. Starting now the procedure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Incision was one millimeter behind the coder septum all the way up. And try to find the right brain. Okay, to the right brain. We are on the right brain. See now the white cartilage and the white tissue there which indicate we are on the right. You see now, the left return the fab is a few seconds only because I'm on the right plane. And then I will just... of the front again you see the white tissue and the septum is grossly limited to the right side the gross deviation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just move about 1.5 centimeter in Balinja. Remove all the skin. And deviated suction suction. Grossly deviated septum. Okay. Nice again. Don't try to fight with the septum because this is deviated nose. If you fight with the septum, you will end at the end with collapse of both cartilaginous and bony motion and in the need, need of a grafting. So you don't have, I mean, no one can really, with this severely deviated septum, no one can achieve absolutely straight nose. And why you want to achieve an absolutely straight, straight uh, dorsal? Because no one, no one has really in the world have straight dorsal. Everyone has some degree of deviation. Our aim is just only to achieve adequate airways. And that's why when we consider the, any type of turbinate reduction, that will really help you to achieve our goals without too much mobilization of the nasal septum. Too much mobilization of the nasal septum will may end with septal perforation, it may end with Supratip collapse or bony collapse, in particular with this patient with cooked noises, with cooked noses, when you have to consider an adequate osteotomy in order to, to uh, mobilize the nasal bone and make the nasal bone straight, even by nasal knife. So now I think I achieved more than adequate airway I mean, the left side was, was blocked, the right side was blocked, and now you see, it's okay. It's okay now, that's fine. It's more than adequate. Now, at the end of surgery, when I do reduction of the inferior turbinate, it will be more than enough. Okay. We need that back again. Now. Hmm? 
So because it's always some, some doctors may behave silly sometimes and then you wish and go to see a doctor sometime for any consultation after surgery and tell the, the patient, oh, your septum is not in the middle. The doctor did not do a good job. This doctor obviously does, I mean, very, very, very unethical and professional because first of all, they don't know, I mean, and they never assess the case before the surgery. They don't know how, how, how much was the deviation how much was the deviation and how bad was it? And I wish I look at, at those doctor's cases and see how the nether septum looks like after surgery. Always you should be very, very, very ethical and behave nicely with your, your, your colleagues. And don't try to make any, 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 any bad comments because you, you did not see the patient before surgery, not assess the situation. Also, you were not during surgery with the surgeon. It's not really clever to make in the, the, dose, in the, the septum very straight and then end with septal perforation or subratip collapse or, or bony collapse. Mm -hmm. Give me just a minute. Uh, so, no, just give me a minute. I'm going to make now a small cut here in incision. The patient has got actually almost normal dimension and tip. If you look at the tip, the tip is fine. It's not wide, it's not budgy. So really, I mean, you've got a, a normal dimension and tip. There's no normal dimension and tip, start to go. You don't have to really section this, keep cleaning the nose. You don't have to disturb. You don't have to disturb the tip if the patient has got normal dimensional tip. I mean, you do tip last year when the patient has got, for example, white tip, asymmetrical tip, bulbous tip, trabezoid tip. That's when you do you consider tip last year. You don't have to consider tip last year if the patient has got a, 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 normal, a normal dimensional tip. The quadra septum, I could expose you can see the quadra septum very clearly from there. I'll go to my gap and mark him then. And I'll just mark my columnar strut. And now the when I'm going to start to the middle of the floor. I will be now bridging the medial locura to the caudal septum with this large, wide columnar strut. We will now check in where it's. Just see if you can see our columnar strut there very clearly. Can you see it? We'll get now the straight needle. Go through the quarter septum and then through our preliminary strut. And then back through my, through the 
Sono bella la strada. Anzi, cosa è stato? La vicina. So, ein Schutzstein in sie. Kolomina Strat to the Koda Septum and the bridge and already switched up to the middle of the Kura now then switched up to the Koda Septum bridge between the Kolomina and the Koda Septum. See now how much how much table rejection I already achieved. You see how much table rejection already achieved with this maneuver before the table was under projected under projected you see now and how much we stress the Kolomina was this was the first position of the columella. So the okay. Now what I did give me mark and bend. What I did actually, this is the coda septum here, coda septum, my columella extended came like this. Already switched up there to the media locura the and then switched up to the coda septum. So I'm bridging between the medial cura and the coda septum, the this bridge, bridge, bridge graft. Now I make, I make uh, underlay, underlay, modify the speed of the graft, the marking bin. So I need to put a graft there to achieve balance between the two sides. Okay. Okay. This is the upper side cartilage. I'll be going under the upper side cartilage. You see, my knife under the cartilage. You see, my knife is under the cartilage and above, above the the skin of mucosa. You see, make it focus now all the way down, all the way down. I reach the bone. I need to the bone now. Try to push the graph now. Let's see if we can push it now through this small hole. Yes, okay, absolutely fine. You see now? So the graph, you see the graph very clear there. It's, it's under the abrata cartilage, above the nasal mucosa, and very nice pocket. Very nice location. We we'll just trim a small portion. Give me fully careful. I trim the small portion of the graph in there. I just need it. Okay. And we'll switch that now. Give me a switch that. It's the exact pocket. This is, uh, okay. Hold the red wing attachment. Don't too close to it. Just pushing the graph in as much as I can. And switch that. Let's look it together. So the graph is to show an exact bucket, an underlay bucket on the cartilaginous lateral alar side wall in order to achieve symmetry and balance between the two sides of the cartilagin as dorsum and correct the C-shaped deformity. Now we do the osteotomy and see what we are going to achieve after the osteotomy marking bin again. Do the osteotomy now. There, okay. We need to break the convexity of the nasal bone there. Quite convex nasal bone. And then we'll go and do the other osteotomy. We'll go 
Corona und du aber Wetter und ich töte mich sehr. Weit hart da vorne ist Song Mehl. Das ist die Song Mann. Okay. You see now, full mobilization of the nasal bone, right, left, left, right. So I achieved my goal, full mobilization. And this way I can really adjust, make the nasal bone. You see the nasal bone, if you look from now, absolutely straight, absolutely straight bone. And almost the nose, almost very straight. Before it was the nose was, as you see, a grossly deviated to get close, grossly deviated to the left side. Now I achieve almost a, a very straight nasal bones. Yeah. So we achieve a very straight nose by doing full septoblasty, uh, modified tibblasty, extended columnar strut, bilateral, lateral and mid-lateral osteotomies, and right modified spider graft. And if you look now, um, actually the front, if you see how the nose is, is almost very straight, and compared with a severe, severe deviation and marked deviation to the left side before with the collapse of the right inner side wall. Of course, you cannot get really, I mean, a, a full, full, I mean, straight nose or, or complete straight nose because, as you see, the patient has got facial asymmetry. If you look at his right cheek and his left cheek, the right cheek is small and the left cheek is, 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 is wider and more flat and more retracted. So therefore the nose is sitting on a slightly an oblique plane. So we, we, we corrected almost 90 percent. You cannot correct more than this because of the facial asymmetry. But you see, if you see now, the patient has got absolutely straight line here, straight line there. And there, you see now, give me Mark and Ben, you see the, the marked deviation there. You see how the nose was going like this, like this before. So obviously a, a, a great improvement. And now I'm last stage, I'm going to consider a uh, partial treatment of the inferior turbinate in order to give patient more and better airway. Thank you very much for watching this nice, strange procedure of severe cook nose and uh, deviated nasal septum. How many minutes now? And all being, being corrected in about, in about, you see, less than 20 minutes. We are almost uh, 18 to 19 minutes. This is our magic rhinoblasty. This is the rhinoblasty for the new generation of facial plastic surgeon. Uh, this is the Bizra rhinoblasty. Thank you for watching me, Dr. Bashar Bizra, our rhinoblasty Bizra Academy in London and Dubai. Thank you.